In today's fresh clip, we're going to learn about belt loading. Belt loading can be thought of in two ways. One, we can think of belt loading as the amount of product per square foot of belting. Alternatively, we can think of belt loading as the amount of product per linear foot of belt. Belt loading becomes very important in freezing and cooling applications. Let's see what it looks like in our food lab. Proper belt loading is critical to determining the size of a freezer for a customer. Belt loading, along with production rates, will determine the length and width of a freezer. In this case, you see a good example of belt loading where the rows and columns are evenly spaced, small gap in between. There are some examples I've seen of poor belt loading. In this example, probably dictated by upstream equipment, you have two perfectly spaced rows, but yet you're still underutilizing a third of the freezer. So some other examples of poor belt loading that I've seen are very sporadic and random. Literally, I've seen examples like that. Or again, dictated by upstream equipment. Again, nice and efficient in the middle of the freezer, but yet still underutilizing a third of the freezer. So again, whether you're an existing customer or a new customer, proper belt loading is critical for getting the most efficient use out of your freezer. So, now we know a bit about the importance of belt loading. For example, if you wish to install a line where you want to run 2,000 pounds per hour, good belt loading will allow you to install a relatively short freezing or cooling tunnel, whereas poor belt loading would require a much longer tunnel. Alternatively, if you already have a freezing or cooling tunnel in your application, poor belt loading will get you low productivity, whereas optimizing your process for good belt loading will get you higher productivity. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, please contact us at the email on the screen.